Why should you offer project work or special services? Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. You know, it doesn't matter if we're a commercial cleaning company or for a residential cleaning company. You should you should think about offering project work. Some people call it special services uh, because it really adds to your your bottom line. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So uh, when we talk about project work or special services. Uh, what we're talking about is services such as carpet cleaning, carpet spotting, uh, stripping and waxing floors, burnishing floors, spray buffing floors, cleaning upholstery, cleaning wallpaper, um, you know, window washing, pressure washing. Those types of services are, is what we're talking about. Now, although you offer uh, general cleaning, uh, you know, which uh, is probably a given, uh, you know, everybody's doing general cleaning, uh, but one thing that would, uh, will help you, especially in the commercial side of things, uh, to keep your competition out of your accounts is to be a full service company. And to be a full service company, you have to offer special services. And, um, you know, let alone that it's going to make you more money and, and uh, uh, your overall account is going to be more profitable, it's going to keep your competition out. And what I mean by that is just think about it. So if you had somebody that uh, you don't you don't do stripping and waxing or you don't clean carpets, and uh, you know they, they're looking to have that service done. Well, you know they could go elsewhere and get that done and uh, get a, 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 a cleaner to come in and clean the carpets, and then they could always say, well, oh by the way, did you know that we also perform janitorial? Well, you know that kind of opened the door for them now to get get in that account. So that's probably the number one reason you want to be able to offer special services. Or project work, whatever you want to call it, but uh, you know it's very, very important. Uh, I know that you know we do very well. We usually average around 150 dollars per hour cleaning carpets. Um, you know, around 100 bucks per hour doing floors. Um, you know, then when we get into doing marble floors, uh, you know, natural marble, uh, you know, our rate even goes higher. You know, so the you know there's a, that's one of the main reasons why you should probably get into it and offer those services because the profit is uh, is, is very good. Um, so, you know, so uh, sure it's going to cost you a little bit uh, on equipment and uh, you got a, a learning curve, but you know there's plenty of sources out there to get your training. You know, the janitorial store we've got training um, uh, for all the you know floor care and um, carpet cleaning. Uh, you can go through IICRC, that's another place to get certified. I'd recommend that one before I recommend some of the others. Um, and, uh, you know, like I say, you're, you're able to go and get your uh, get the training that you need and uh, to be able to perform these services as a professional. Um, you know, and just like everything else, the, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Now, your equipment's going to vary in price, but for example, let's say we're, we're uh, going to clean carpets. You know, I, we've always used portable extractors. Um, I just never wanted to, you know, invest in a truck mount and a van and then run hoses through doorways and, and areas like that to where I had to have a, a person there actually watching that entrance so nobody comes in. Uh, that just didn't make sense to me. So we always used portable equipment so we could keep the facility locked up and secure. Um, you can do just as good a job with a portable uh, uh, piece of equipment then as you can with a truck mount. No doubt about it. You have to remember it's all about the technician at the end of the line. And if they've been properly trained, they're going to uh, you know, do a great job. So anyway, uh, you're, you know, the amount of money you're going to spend for equipment uh, for a portable unit, uh, you, know, you may spend around $4,000. Because you want to get a unit that's going to be able to do more than just clean carpet. So always remember that whenever you're buying equipment. For special services, uh, get equipment that can do more than what you in first intended it to do. You know, such as a, a carpet cleaning machine. Don't just get a carpet cleaning machine that's that has a fixed PSI uh, to where you can't adjust the PSI. Uh, we want to be able to, to lower it so we can clean upholstery, and we want to be able to raise it so we can clean uh, stone floors and ceramic tile and things like that. So. Uh, if you do go get a portable extractor, get something that can has a ver variable PSI from 0 to 1200. Uh, then you've got the full range that you need uh, to, to, to do a lot of different services. And that machine will make you a lot of money. It's uh, better to have that machine out in the field earning money than having it sitting in the warehouse. Now, uh, the same thing is true with any piece of equipment that you buy. 
So now let's say if you want to get into the floor care. Uh, floor care, you can buy an auto scrubber, you can buy uh, cylindrical machines, you can buy rotary machines. You know, and uh, some of these equipments are going to cost you, you know, a few hundred dollars, uh, um, and, uh, you know, up to a few thousand dollars. But, you know, the thing is, is that, um, you know, if you learn how to do these things and you get the, get good equipment, it's going to make you a lot of money. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I know that to be a fact. Um, so, always remember that. You know, don't try to get, get away with buying cheap equipment because it will come back to nip you. The time that you want to take it out in the field, there's going to be a repair issue or something because it was cheap and things wore out or, or they just didn't work because they were cheap. So don't do that. Buy, buy good equipment uh, so the equipment's, uh, and take care of it. That's the key is taking care of your equipment. You know, uh, I see so many cleaning companies when I look at some of their, your, their equipment, it's just, you know, unbelievable that they still have water in the recovery tank, um, you know, and or even the solution tank. Um, you know, you don't do that. You know, drain it all, clean everything up, wipe things down, you know, uh, take care of your equipment, it's going to take care of you. But anyway, you know, uh, that's the whole reason why you want to be able to provide uh, pr uh, project work or special services. And, uh, you know, here's a little strategy that I've been using for many, many years, is that when I'm out on a, on a competitive bid uh, for janitorial services, and, and I know that the project work is uh, uh, going to be included in that, uh, what I'll do is I can always lower my points a few on my general cleaning because I know I'm going to make up for it in, in the project work. So uh, next time you come into that scenario, just go ahead and use that strategy. Uh, uh, you might be surprised that uh, you'll go ahead and close, the, close more accounts that way. So, well, that's about all I got for today. Uh, hopefully you found this useful, and if you did, go ahead and click on the, the like button and share button. And for those of you that haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you know, please uh, click on the link and uh, subscribe. Uh, we've got many more videos uh, and uh, we're going to be doing even more uh, on various topics. So thanks and we'll see you.